Hi guys, welcome to Med Survival Med Mnemonics. Today we are discussing a crucial topic about the medication we need to avoid and their alternatives in patients with cirrhosis or liver failure. This is a vital topic because there is a long list of medications that can harm these cirrhotic patients. The mnemonic is long and is Dr. Raza, which is me, met a cirrhotic patient at CT Lane and tried to take charge of his oral diabetic meds. Let's break it down. The doctor is for disulfiram. That is a medication for alcoholism and it is metabolized by the liver. So it should be avoided in patient with cirrhosis or liver failure. Raza stands for nolazine, which is used for chronic angina. This drug is metabolized by the liver P4 50 enzyme so it level increase in patients with liver failure or cirrhosis making it unsafe for them met stands for methotrexate and methimazole the methotrexate is an anti-metabolite and methimazole is an anti-thyroid medication so we have demods as an alternatives for rheumatological conditions in case we cannot give patient methotrexate. Another antithyroid medication that we can use instead of methimazole is propyl thiouracil or PTU. But we should remember that PTU is also a hepatotoxic medication. So in such scenario, we need to consider referral to endocrinologist or hepatologist a stands for vitamin A, which is another hepatotoxic medication that should be avoided in these patients. Cirrhotic refers to cirrhosis or liver failure patients in general. Up till now, we have discussed the individual medications that should be avoided in cirrhotic patients. From now, we will be discussing the groups of medications that should be avoided. From patient, we can remember painkillers that include NSAIDs and uh, acetaminophen. As far as NSAIDs are concerned, they should be avoided in liver failure patients because they increase the risk of bleeding, acute kidney injury, and fluid retention. For acetaminophen, the dosage limit differs. In healthy patients with no liver disease, we can use up to 4 grams of acetaminophen in 24 hours. For cirrhotic or patient with chronic liver disease, the limit should be 2 grams. And patients with acute liver failure should avoid it entirely. Another option for pain medication in chronic liver disease patient is low-dose tramadol. AT stands for atorvastatin. It should be avoided in all patients with liver failure that it increases the risk of rhabdomolysis. The two statins that can be used are pravastatin and simvastatin that should only be used in compensated cirrhosis. However, in the patients with decompensated cirrhosis, it's better to avoid any types of statin altogether. From CD, it is cimetidine, an H2 blocker. It should be avoided and it has been associated with hepatic encephalopathy. An alternative H2 blocker that can be used is famotidine, which does not require any dose adjustment unless the patient has concomitant renal failure. Aline stands for labetalol, which is an alpha and beta blocker, and nebivolol, a selective beta-1 blocker. The beta blockers are often used in cirrhotic patients to prevent the bleeding from esophageal viruses. The three beta blockers commonly used are carvedilol, nadolol, and propranolol, which are effective for both primary and secondary prevention. So while treating with beta blockers, what should be our targets? So our target should be to bring down the heart rate between 50 and 60 while maintaining the MAP greater than or equal to 82 or systolic blood pressure greater than 90. And stands for three antihypertensive medications. A is for ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers, and for nifedipine, and D for diltiazem. 
So A's or ARBs can be used only in the compensated cirrhosis. But they should be avoided in decompensated cirrhosis because there is risk for pre-renal AKI. Nephiripine and diltiazem, they are metabolized by the liver. So they should be avoided. The alternative antihypertensive options include the beta blocker that are mentioned earlier and other calcium channel blockers uh, which are not metabolized by the liver and should be started at the lower dosages. As a general rule, for antihypertensive management in cirrhotic patients, aim for higher MAP of equal to or greater than 82 millimeter of mercury, which is significantly higher than the regular MAP target of 65 in general population. TRIED stands for triamterene, a potassium sparing diuretic. It should be avoided as it can lead to megaloblastic anemia. And two stands for thiazide diuretics. These should be absolutely avoided in cirrhotic patient as they are not strong diuretic but can lead to side effects like low sodium level, hyponatremia, hypokalemia. Both of them can lead to hepatic encephalopathy. Diuretics are commonly used in cirrhotic patients for the treatment of ascites. The potassium sparing diuretics that we can use are spironolactone and aplerinone. And the loop diuretic that we can use is furosemide. We typically use spironolactone in combination with furosemide with common dosing ratio of 100 mg of spironolactone to 40 mg of furosemide. However, this can be adjusted based on the side effects of the medication and the electrolyte levels like potassium and sodium levels. The TAKE stands for antibiotics that should be avoided in cirrhotic patients. T is for tetracycline, A is for azithromycin, K is for ketoconazole, and E is for erythromycin. Uh, they're all hepatotoxic. And CHARGE is for chlor chloramphenicol. The chloramphenicol is metabolized by the liver, so its level rise with the uh, liver failure. A few of the alternative antibiotics that can be used are amoxicillin, nagmentin, ceftriaxone, ciprofloxacin, and rifampicin. And OFF stands for opioids and benzodiazepines. These medications can lead to hepatic encephalopathy. And Many are metabolized by the liver. His is for halothane, that is a hepatotoxic medication. Oral is to cover the PPIs or proton pump inhibitors that should be avoided in patients with cirrhosis. O is for omeprazole, RA is for beprazole, L is for lesseprazole. These medications are metabolized by the liver. A safer alternative PPI for cirrhotic patient is esomeprazole. Diabetic meds is for diabetic medications. From diabetic, you can remember diabetic and meds, M, E, D, and S. We can remember what medication we should not be using. M, E stands for metformin, which should be avoided in decompensated cirrhosis as it can lead to lactic acidosis. However, it can be used in compensated cirrhosis patient. M, E also stands for megalitinides and S stands for sulfonylureas. So both of these drugs should be avoided as they are metabolized by the liver. So how should we manage diabetes in these patients? There are a few options. Number one is insulin, but the dose should be decreased since the cirrhotic patients have a poor appetite and early stiety. Another option is GLP-1 analogs, and then the third option is SGLT2 inhibitors. That was a long, long list of medications and their alternatives. It took me a week to study and make this mnemonic. I hope it's helpful and that you remember the mnemonic. Dr. Raza met a cirrhotic patient at City Lane and tried to take charge of his oral diabetic meds. It covers most medications used in the complications and comorbidities of cirrhotic patients. If you know any other medication to add, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you.